Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you don't already know who I am, I'm Helen from Crafty So and So. I am the sole creator of this blog and YouTube channel. I'm a fabric hoarder, sewing pattern hoarder and sewing enthusiast and I have been sewing for a number of years now. I originally got into sewing through my grandmother but then after that I went on to university where I became a qualified costume maker though it wasn't the field that I really wanted to go into and so I became self-employed and did a number of other things and this is where I am now. So on my channel I like to create useful tutorials for those who are looking to try new projects, sew alongs for new patterns and pattern testing and great beginner tips such as the video I'm going to make today. So if you are completely and utterly new to sewing and you really want to get a really good background of what sewing is and what a sewing machine does, so basically it takes a thread from the very top and a thread from the very bottom and they weave in and out of the fibres of your fabric to join them together and to create a tight knit seam. The seam is caused by the two pieces of thread coming together over your fabric um, and they weave together just to make it nice and tight and that's what creates the, the stitch line and the seam. Before you completely jump in and get a little carried away there are, there are a few things I want to run through that are on the sewing machine that you should know before you do any sewing or any kind of manoeuvring on your machine. So I have a Benino 1008 which is a pretty like, not standard, but it's a higher version of sewing machine. It's one that I learn on so it's one that I feel the most comfortable with. You might have a completely different machine. All machines are quite different so don't worry if your machine looks different. The key components that you need to know are all going to be the same on my machine and your machine. So the first thing you really want to go and pay attention to is the foot pedal. The foot pedal is the thing that plugs into the machine and you can, that's how you control it. So you'll notice it's kind of like at an angle like this and you press it down, oh, that's all the way down and that will be the fastest speed of the machine. I like to think of a foot pedal as kind of like the accelerator in a car. The further you push down, the faster the machine is going to go. So the lighter you press on the machine pedal is the lighter and the steadier it's going to go. So if you know how to drive and you're comfortable at driving, that's a good way of knowing how to handle the foot pedal and control the speed of your sewing machine altogether. The foot pedal can come in just as it is like so with a wire that it will connect to your sewing machine and then a wire that will connect to the mains plug or you can have them in two sections, one wire that goes from the machine to the from the machine to the pedal and from the machine to the plug. Either way it all works the same and all you need to know is that the foot pedal is what controls the speed of the machine. So the next thing that we need to pay attention to on our list is this spool holder which is at the back here. I'll include some close-ups so you can see in better detail. Some will sit further on the top like here but mine just sits slightly at the back just where my hand is here and I have two prongs for my threads as you can see just popping them up there so you can see. I have two, one for a spare and one for the one I'm working from. The next section is the spool holder. So this is where your spool will go to be wound on. So as you can see here this is your spool and this is what lives under here or if you've got a drop-in machine it will sit here. So the, the spool would simply sit on a little notch up here and you can clip that into place and you will press on your foot pedal and that will wind on with thread. So that, that's a good way for you to be able to keep your matching thread at all times for your project. I will go into further detail about how to wind on your thread in a later video. Each, in terms of this, each machine can be quite different, so make sure you search your model and find out and read your instruction manual how to do that. So the next thing you're going to want to pay attention to is the stitches. So I have a little bit more complicated with my machine just because it's a bit of a more advanced machine. I have a section up here, I'll show you a picture, but you don't have to pay attention to this one. 
these are more decorative stitches that are used for like trimming and things like that which as a beginner you don't need to pay attention to the one that you need to pay attention to the most is this straight stitch the straight stitch is something that you're going to be using pretty much all the time um, it's very common it's probably the most common stitch because it's kind of what everybody needs and uses like it, clothing will use straight stitch you know homewares will use straight stitch all these different things use that same stitch and for me mine is located here where this little nozzle is here yours may just be a dial which you need to change similar to like this one or this one um, it will have a guide on so you'll be able to see which kind of size stitching you're going for I put another image up of a different machine that has that kind of um, kind of dial so you can see what it looks like on a different machine and that might be more re relevant to the one that you have. So mine starts at naught, which is the smallest stitch and goes to 5 which is the largest stitch and I simply use the, the little toggle to twist it and it will go from naught down to 5 and so forth. The next stitch you're going to want to pay attention to is the zigzag stitch. This is good if you're using stretch fabrics or you're looking at using elastic or anything like that. Also if you're using fabrics that are going to fray and you want to kind of create a, um, a binded edge to help stop it fray, you might want to look at the, the zigzag stitch. Like my, my, like, like my straight stitch, I can use the dial to create a different kind of zigzag and that's how I control my stitches. Again, I'll include an image so you can see what other sewing machine faces look like with their stitch dials. Another very important part of your sewing machine is the back stitch. As you might be able to see here, it does say back stitch and this is because this little nozzle here, where my stitch length is, it, that it controls my back stitch. For some people it might be a button, others it might be a lever. Um, each one will be different. I will include a picture of the button version so that you can see what it might be like for your machine. Um, and so I would simply lift this up, press on the foot pedal, It would my machine will go in reverse and then I let it go when I'm ready and then it will go straight into normal going forward stitching. The back stitch is important because it kind of locks your stitches in place so it will go over the stitches you've already created going forward and then once you go back over it again it will lock those in place so then your, your, so your stitch line doesn't unthread when you start to use the garment you're wear, you know, making or the item you're creating. So the next important thing is the hand and balance wheel. This is located at the side. This wheel is a little bit larger than the rest, it's you know just a little bit smaller than my palm and this is more, the most important part because it controls your needle. So if I was to move it up like round the needle would go up and down. So you need to pay attention to this because when you come to finishing a seam and you want to remove the needle from the from the fabric you'll need to manoeuvre your um, dial at the side to lift the needle out so then you can remove the fabric without damaging the needle or the fabric. Feed dogs, these are located at the bottom here and these will also move along with the dial. These you don't want to really pay attention to much but if you are wondering what they are and if they're going to damage your fabric then they will only damage your fabric if you're using very delicate fabrics. For things such as cottons or anything a bit more hearty, um, it won't damage them. It actually creates like a little like pull along, like a little train. So it will kind of grab hold of the fibres of your fabric and naturally pull it through while you're sewing. So you don't have to feel like you have to really push it through the under the foot. Next is the bobbin and bobbin case. For me it lives in this little compartment under here. And as you can see that's the bobbin case and inside is the bobbin like so
So as you can see, that's my bobbin case and that's my bobbin. So they sit under here and they click into place when you are putting them back in. Some people, um, some brands of sewing machine have a drop in bobbin. So you'd literally take the bobbin and drop it in to the top here. Um, they tend to be more popular with beginners because they're a lot easier to use. Again, I'll show a image of a drop-in bobbin so you can see what it looks like. Another important part of your sew machine is the tension. Mine's currently lo located at the top here. The tension is important because whether you are working with a hefty fabric or a lightweight fabric, you might need to change the tension, which changes the kind of um, tightness of the stitches. So the tighter, the lower the tension, the tighter the stitch it. The lower the tension number, so currently mine's on five, which is the recommended. But if you change that to even three, three, two, and one, that can be looser. So you tend, that tends to be better for thicker fabrics that need a little bit more space, um, just so the sewing machine can work around the thickness of the fabric. Whereas if I changed my attention to 6, 7 or 8, that would be tighter, so that would be better for thinner, thinner fabrics and more delicate fabrics that need a little bit more of a tighter stitching. I'd recommend just leaving as it is, because if you, we are more likely going to be just getting started with like a cotton. So I'd leave your tension as it is, unless you feel it's broken or your machine's a little bit older and needs a little bit of adjusting then I will do a video soon on how to change your tension. So the next thing you need to pay attention to is your pressure, presser foot, which is located down here by your needle. So the foot itself is the thing that glides on top of your fabric, so you can make sure that you're going in the right direction, going straight or wherever you need to be going. Um, this just helps kind of give you a guide of where things are going with your machine and your stitch line. Your foot is controlled with, by a lever. It's sometimes located on the side. Mine is actually located at the back. And if you were to press that lever down, your foot would then sit on the base of your machine. You always want to make sure that your sewing machine foot is down while you're sewing, because if not, it can cause your, um, your thread to kind of bunch and it go really loose and it's just not, it just, it doesn't work. You need to always make sure that your lever is down. Make sure that when you've finished sewing that you lift your foot. Make sure your your um, make sure that your needle also is lifted by using a lever at the side here, so then you can remove the fabric without causing any damage. So on that note, the final thing that we want to point out is the needle itself. Located here, you can move, often on a machine you can move the position of a needle. For me, it's this lever here in the middle and I can change it to, to this, to, to the left or the right or keep it central. For a beginner project, you'll just want to keep it central because that's all you'll need to pay attention to. You won't be doing anything too complicated that requires it to move. So the needle is located here so that will go through the foot through the base lift the thread and join it and create the seam there is a little notch at the side that you might need a small screwdriver for if you need to change your needle whether it breaks or it just gets dull or if you need to change it because you are using a different fabric but I'll cover that later on because that's a little bit more complicated so now you've learned all the things you need to know about your sewing machine and getting started, we're going to show you how to thread it. So now we've learned all the things we want to pay attention to on our sewing machine, I'm going to show you how to thread it up. I'm just going to get a dark thread to show you. So first you want to put your thread on your top with the holder here. Pull it all the way down and then you see a notch at the top here. Pull that in place to follow it down. You see like a little like, uh, it looks like kind of like a little tap sort of thing, like a little waterfall. Pull it down, hook onto the metal bar here, hook that, 
back up you want this to be at the very top so you've got that metal bar at the very top you pull that down back in around the hook at the bottom with your needle and through through the needle and out the back then you want to take your bottom thread which I've got here in my hand you want to let that loose so you can see it and you want to hold your top thread which is here in my hand turn your turn the dial at the side here so then your needles going down because what that's going to do is going to wrap around this bottom thread and pull it up so you want both threads at the top to get started keep turning give a gentle pull on your top thread and it will pull up the bottom thread with it pull them together and you are done So now you've learnt how to thread up your sewing machine, you can do a couple of test pieces on test fabric, but I suggest that you make sure you've got all your settings correct, you've got your straight stitch in place, you've got your, your machine threaded and your needle in. Make sure that you have your foot down when you start sewing. Don't forget to do your back stitch and I'd love to see how you get on. Thank you for joining me on this video, I hope you found this helpful and I hope you have managed to thread your sewing machine and get started. Make sure you do plenty of test projects just to get you comfortable, comfortable and confident with your sewing machine and then you have less chance of any mishaps. I also like to do plenty of test runs just because I like to be able to feel confident going forward and the more confidence you have, the more likely you are going to succeed and enjoy your sewing projects. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.